Just looking at the uh, 99 day Ford uh, strike, it, in, in some ways it was a moment in time, but in, in other ways what happened during that, those 99 days actually la lasted for three generations and more, and uh, even we're, we, we can feel the impact of it 70 years later. Essentially, you're at a time when young men and some young women were coming home from war. They arrived back home in Windsor, and there was a sense of optimism. They didn't find that. At the Ford company, there was talks of hundreds, maybe a couple of thousand layoffs. So just before the strike, the federal government had essentially set the, the, the groundwork for unions to form and for collective bargaining. There was so much concern among the workers that they decided that they were going to have a strike. And September the 12th, there were 10,000 people uh, went out. What happened after that was very divisive in the community, and to settle it, an arbitrator was, was called in, and his name was uh, uh, Ivan Rand, Supreme Court Justice. His ruling uh, essentially was the template that allowed the organizing uh, of unions, and, and essentially his key thing was to bring in a recommendation that there be an automatic checkoff for union dues, which meant uh, everyone in a plant, uh, their union dues would be collected by the company and given to the union so nobody could essentially benefit from a union but not be part of it. I think if, if people remember that strike, and I think it's to me, obviously there's the outcome of it and, uh, and Justice Rand's, uh, uh, what's called the Rand formula. But uh, to me, it, I, I still think of the photos that, that came out of it by the Windsor Star photographers, which are just iconic. And I think when I think of the Ford strike, there's a picture, I think, taken November 5th, November the 6th, 1945, and it's basically Drouillard uh, Road and what would become Riverside Drive, just absolutely clogged with hundreds of uh, cars as uh, uh, supporters of the strike basically said we're shutting down uh, anybody getting into Ford. So to me that's what I always think about it, just those photos. It's very fascinating to me to, to uh, look at the Windsor Star's role in this and I think the first day you go back when the strike started and, and again we're in a time uh, TV isn't a factor, radio isn't a factor, social media is basically talking to your neighbor across the fence and you would think, wow, how do people learn about that? And the strike was actually called at 10 o'clock in the morning. Later that afternoon, the front page of the Windsor Star said 10,000 out of Ford and we think of that as quite remarkable. And if you look at the front page of the paper, there's four little stars and the word extra. So there really were extras back there. The Windsor Star was the source of what was going on during uh, the strike from start to finish. And I, th I think if anybody wants to read the history of that strike, the one place you go to is the Windsor Star, and that really is kind of uh, uh, shows you the importance the the, the paper you know made and the impact it made on the community in those days.